of God dwelling within us. Alleluia. Alleluia. Our main celebrant this evening is Father Jacob. Assisting him is Deacon Monty. Please let us begin Mass by singing this hymn number 521. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, how good it is to be gathered together on this, the Feast of Pentecost, asking the Lord for that outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We first received that Spirit in, in our baptisms, and so we remember our baptisms as we sprinkle ourselves with this water, which we bless now. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people's prayers. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter received their baptism. Through Christ our Lord. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who willed the Paschal mystery to be encompassed as a sign in 50 days, grant that from out of the scattered nations, the confusion of many tongues may be gathered by heavenly grace into one great confession of your name. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The whole world spoke the same language, using the same words, while the people were migrating in the east. They came upon a valley in the land of Shinar and settled there. They said to one another, Come, let us mold bricks and harden them with fire. They used bricks for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, come let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the sky, and so make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered all over the earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the people had built. Then the Lord said, if now, while they are one people, all speaking the same language, they have started to do this, nothing will later stop them from doing whatever they presume to do. Let us then go down there and confuse their language so that one will not understand what another says. Thus the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth and they stopped building the city. That is why it is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the speech of the world. It was from that place that he scattered them all over the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank 
forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that sees is not hope. For who hopes for what one sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with endurance. In the same way, the Spirit too comes to aid of our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings, and the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come, Holy Spirit, come, and from your celestial home shed a ray of light divine. Come, Father of the poor, come, source of all our store, Come within our bosom shine. You of comforters the best, You the soul's most welcome guest, Sweet refreshment here below. In our labor rest most sweet, Grateful coolness in the heat, Solace in the midst of woe. O most blessed light divine, Shine within these hearts of yours, and our inmost being fill. Where you are not, we have not, nothing good indeed our thought, nothing free from taint of ill. Heal our wounds, our strength renew, on our dryness pour your dew. Wash the stains of guilt away. Bend the stubborn heart and will. Melt the frozen, warm the chill. Guide the steps that go astray. On the faithful who adore and confess you evermore, in your sevenfold gifts descend. Give them virtue, sure reward. Give them your salvation, Lord. Give them joys that never end. Amen, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. May the word of God be always on our minds, our lips, 
and forever in our hearts. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up and exclaimed, Let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. As scripture says, Rivers of living water will flow from within him who believes in me. He said this in reference to the Spirit that those who came to believe in him were to receive. There was, of course, no Spirit yet because Jesus had not yet been glorified. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, perhaps you thought that you were going to hear today, this evening, about the rushing wind and tongues of fire descending on the heads of the apostles. And if you want to hear that reading, you'll have to come back tomorrow. <laughs> because that is the reading, of course, for the day of Pentecost. And here we are the night before at the vigil, awaiting that Holy Spirit. There was, of course, no spirit yet because the Lord Jesus had not yet been glorified. And maybe that doesn't say, maybe that doesn't seem obvious to us. It was obvious to John there was, of course, no spirit yet because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Now, was there no spirit? The Holy Spirit, of course, we know is God himself. The Holy Spirit hovered over the waters at the moment of creation. The Holy Spirit is the one who has spoken through all the prophets. The Holy Spirit is always at work, eternally living with the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit existed already and indeed had been at work in the world. The Holy Spirit descended like a dove on Jesus at his baptism. The Holy Spirit filled him and drove him out into the desert. By whose power did he heal the sick? Well, by his power, God's power, since Jesus is God, but by the Holy Spirit's power as well. By whose power was water turned into wine? By whose power did he forgive sins? Over and over again by the Holy Spirit. The Son of God is never alone. The Son of God is full of the Holy Spirit. And the Son of God is with the Father. The Holy Spirit has been at work since the first moment of creation. So that's not what John means when he says there was, of course, no spirit yet. But perhaps there was no spirit for us. We heard in the first reading about the Tower of Babel, that in that evil city, Babylon, um, symbol throughout the scriptures of everything wicked and in opposition to God. Through pride and sin, that one human family was scattered and confused and divided. Certainly not the work of the Holy Spirit. And then on the day of Pentecost, which we know the story, even though we didn't get to hear it today in the readings. Gathered together in that holy city, Jerusalem, the opposite of Babylon, <laughs> that holy city, Jerusalem. Through love of God and the obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit sent down on the people of God, the apostles, and rather than confusion and division and scattering, there was understanding. And from all the peoples of the world, a united family brought together. And under the Apostle Peter, who preached to them, write the good news and called them to repentance and baptism, baptized into one family, 3,000 that day baptized into the one family of God, the church, united. So for them, there was the power of the Holy Spirit. There was the love of God at work, which is not scattering and confusion and division, but which is gathering 
and understanding and unity in the love of the Lord. There was the Holy Spirit at work for them. The work of the Lord Jesus Christ to gather them into one body. Whose body? The, that same Lord Jesus Christ. That same Lord Jesus Christ who has been glorified. He was with them for 33 years or so. He was with them glorified. For 40 days he ascended into heaven. But the Lord Jesus Christ is not dead. He is alive. And his body continues to be at work. His body continues to be at work here on earth. How? Through the work of the Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus Christ has been glorified. He sits at the right hand of the Father, but he is still at work. And that answers another question we often have about Pentecost. Those apostles received the Holy Spirit. They went out, and the people from every nation understood them in their own tongue. What a wonderful gift from God. But that doesn't happen now, at least not mostly. Sometimes it does, but at least not mostly. Why not? Why can't I speak Egyptian? Or if I meet somebody from Vietnam, as occasionally happens, why can't I communicate with them? Shouldn't I be able to? Well, sometimes we think as though the gifts that the Lord Jesus Christ came to give, he came to give, like, to me, just me, myself, individually. But of course, this is not how God has ever called anybody. That's not how God called Noah. He called him with his family and eight people, the family of Noah, and all those other people invited, but they didn't believe him, were called. God called Abraham and the whole people of Abraham, a whole, a whole caravan, left Ur. God called Moses and thousands from children in the womb, babies in arms, to the elderly left Egypt. God called David and the whole kingdom went with. God sends his spirit and the whole church proclaims to every nation gathered there. In the time of Pentecost, the whole church spoke every language of the world. And I say, brothers and sisters, that in our time, too, the church also speaks every language of the world. The work of the Lord Jesus Christ, who continues to be at work because he is alive, not dead, is the work of the church, his body. And just as the Lord wanted to call every nation, he still is calling every nation, and he doesn't need me to speak Vietnamese to do that. He has plenty of disciples who speak Vietnamese. And the same goes for healing the sick, for raising the dead, for feeding the hungry. Those extraordinary gifts that the Lord accomplished during his time on earth, he continues to accomplish because he continues to be alive and at work in this world. He continues to accomplish extraordinary gifts through his church because he continues to be at work by the power of the Holy Spirit sent down to fill his body with his life, to fill his church with his life, that people of God that he has called out of slavery to, to sin and death, not to Pharaoh, through the waters of baptism, not through the Red Sea, to be his people, following after him. You know, after the Passover, when by the blood of the Lamb, the people of God were freed, do you know how many days it was before they received the law? It was 50 days. <laughs> In 50 days, with a rushing wind and earthquake and fire on the top of that mountain, the law of God came down to be with that people, to make them the people of God sent out on a mission and tell them how to go and live that life. 
That's what Pentecost was. It was already a feast 50 days after the Passover. That's why they were all there. That's why all those people were there in Jerusalem. It was one of the great feasts. And the Lord Jesus Christ, in rushing wind and fire and shaking, has also sent his new people and taught them how to be his people, how to live his life, given them a mission, sent them out in the new law, which is the life of the Holy Spirit. That life is in the church. That life is at work in the church. Which is not to say that that life is also not at work in you. Of course it is. Not in exactly the same ways, as we've already made clear. But of course it is at work in you. You received the Holy Spirit when you were baptized. Became a temple in which that Holy Spirit dwelt. You received again the outpouring of the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit at confirmation to do the things, to have that mission. And no one can say that Jesus Christ is Lord except by the Holy Spirit, as St. Paul has told us. When we are convicted of our sin, when we are bothered by what we've done wrong, when we are moved and turned, to what is good, who is that in us but the Holy Spirit? Of course the Holy Spirit is at work in you. When we are nudged and prodded to do what's good, when we're encouraged and strengthened, when something when we're failing, <laughs> when we find ourselves moved in doing good to our neighbor, to our family, family, to our friends, who is that in us but the power and working of the Holy Spirit, which you first received however many years ago in your baptism, which was strengthened in you by confirmation, which is always being poured out. In every sacrament that we receive, including right today on this altar, by whose power do we receive these gifts of God, whose life is poured out here. The Lord Jesus Christ is here by the power of the Holy Spirit. When we receive any gift from God, it is the Holy Spirit at work in you to give you life. In our prayer, in every good deed, in every moment spent thanking or praising the Lord, it's the Holy Spirit at work in us. In every time we give witness to the Lord Jesus Christ, which every one of us is called to do, just as Peter and those apostles did, well, perhaps not just exactly the same way, but truly and really, here in our families, here to our co-workers, to our friends, to our neighbors, it is the Holy Spirit at work in us to proclaim that good news, not to every nation on the earth, perhaps, like on the day of Pentecost, but the same church with the same Holy Spirit, with the same mission to make known that holy name of Jesus Christ to every person on this earth. Sometimes when we think of Pentecost or we think of the Holy Spirit, we want to think as though, well, sometimes it is a discouragement to think, the Lord is not active in the same way now. This is not true, of course. We've talked about that. The Lord, the same Lord, with the same Spirit, is doing the same work in his church. But sometimes we think that the Lord is not at work the same way, and it's not a discouragement. Sometimes maybe we take some consolation in that, some false consolation. The Lord called those apostles to great things. He called them to give a bold witness to him. He called them to be thought a fool by their neighbors because they loved Jesus. Thanks be to God he's not calling me to something like that. Thanks be to God he's not at work in that same way. Well, brothers and sisters, I've got news for you. The, we, the same Holy Spirit is at work in the same church and in the same ways 
for the same witness to the same repentance from the same sins <laughs> and for the same baptism to share the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are called to that witness as well today in our families, to our neighbors, to our coworkers, and perhaps to be thought fools in the same way. Please God, we should be so fortunate to be blessed in that way. So today, on this day of Pentecost, we ask that the Lord will renew in us that outpouring of the Spirit, by which he was at work then, by which he wants to be at work now, that we too would be bold witnesses to him, perhaps not to the ends of the earth, but to the ends certainly of our, to the ends certainly of Council Bluffs, <laughs> to the ends of our comfort, to the ends of our experiences, And we imagine right now, perhaps, who he is calling us to give that witness to. We ask that the Lord will empower us by that Holy Spirit to speak his truth, to give his witness, and we are confident that he will bless it as he has throughout the history of the church, as he has throughout all of his work. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Brothers and sisters, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we profess the one faith. I believe in one God. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, substantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I grant one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. The Holy Spirit in us cries out, Abba, Father. And so by the power of that Spirit, we present our prayers to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For all entrusted with the word of God, for preachers, presbyters, pastors, and parents, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For firefighters, postal workers, garbage collectors, for all who work to keep this complex world going, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have lost loved ones in the cause of freedom, that they be comforted by memories of noble service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful of all nations, for those who share Christ's good news in varied languages, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increased devotion to the Holy Spirit among our young people 
as the Spirit leads them in their prayerful discernment to discover their vocation in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for rains to assist our farmers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those on the prayer line, all those that have asked us to pray for them, and those intentions we hold ever so close to our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for Gary Drake, whose intention we honor at this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. And we pray also for the gift of the Holy Spirit upon us that we would be witnesses to those the Lord has called us to witness to, especially those we think of now. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, creator, you send your spirit with gifts upon us. In that same spirit, we ask you to hear the prayers we offer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our preparation song is number 654, O oh, breathe on me, O oh, breath of God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Pour out upon these gifts the blessing of your spirit, we pray, O Lord, so that through them your church may be imbued with such love that the truth of your saving mystery may shine forth for the whole world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of the, your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. On the last day of the festival, Jesus stood and cried out, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Well, what a beautiful day to be together and to celebrate the sending of the Holy Spirit. We have a few announcements uh, before we send you all forth to give that witness to the world. First of all, um, tomorrow, no, Monday, it's Saturday. To on Monday, Memorial Day, we will have a Memorial Day Mass at 9 in the morning up at St. Joseph's Cemetery. It's hosted by St. Patrick's Church this year. Uh, we were the hosts last year, so it's for all, the whole town of Council Bluffs. Everyone is invited. Um, it might be, we will have some chairs. It might be wise to bring your own if you have a little folding chair um, to bring that along. But everyone is invited to a 9 a.m. Mass on Monday morning, Memorial Day, up at St. Joseph's Cemetery. Also, save the date uh, for June 11th, just two weeks. In just two weeks is the Feast of Corpus Christi, which of course here at Corpus Christi Parish is our patronal feast day. We will be hosting the Corpus Christi procession for the whole town of Council Bluffs, and we are going big this year. We're going to be processing from right here at 1.30 in the afternoon. We will leave Corpus Christi Queen of Apostles and we will process to Holy Family Church. Not quite two miles. Um, it, it will be a lovely procession with many different groups from, from Council Bluffs participating and including, I hope, all of you participating. We will have water at all of the stops along the way. We will have a trolley 
following behind. So if perhaps um, a mile and a half is a little bit far for you to be walking, maybe you want to walk half of it honoring the Lord, and then maybe you want to ride in the trolley for half of it. Maybe you want to ride in the trolley for all of it. That would be fine. Although it doesn't have infinite seats, but it has a lot of seats. Um, so I really want to encourage you, even if perhaps you, know, you might not be able to process the entire way on foot along with us, to please consider participating. That will be June 11th at 1.30 p.m. Um, it really is a wonderful way to honor our Lord, present body and blood, soul and divinity in the Eucharist, and to proclaim him in a very real way, to give witness to him, to our neighbors through the streets um, of Council Bluffs. So please join us for that in two weeks. And this is the last weekend that I will be standing up here like this after communion. We're going to change the way we do announcements. From now on, well, first of all, we're trying to make fewer announcements just in general, although I'm not really succeeding in that today. But in general, we're trying to have fewer announcements and encourage you to be checking the bulletin every week. There is a lot of wonderful stuff in the bulletin, including a lot of a sort of a calendar of upcoming events, announcements for different ways you can get involved. So please do take a bulletin home every week, but we will still have some announcements. We're going to make them before the start of Mass. So we'll have announcements right at the beginning of Mass because we want to make this change to help us all to pray with the Eucharist. You know that when we receive the Eucharist, we are receiving the Lord Jesus Christ into ourselves in a way that is unlike anything else in the world. Right? Of course, the, the Lord God, maker of the whole universe, is present to us in a real way, everywhere and anywhere. But he is present to us here in a way unlike anywhere else in the entire world. And we receive him into our very selves in communion in a way unlike any other way we can be with the Lord God. And so we want to try to help this time after communion to be a, a time that reflects that reality, that, that helps us to pray with the Lord who is within us and um, that helps us to sort of meditate a little bit on that. So to do that, we're going to move our announcements and we are going to start, I think next week, singing after Mass. You probably know that at our, all of our English daily Masses and at all of our Spanish Masses, we say or we sing a beautiful prayer written by St. Ignatius of Loyola, the anima Christi, soul of Christ, sanctify me, body of Christ, save me. Um, so we have a nice setting of that hymn in English for all of us to learn. It might take us a few weeks, but we'll get there because it's going to be the same every week. So you will learn it. It's easy. It's beautiful. It helps us to meditate on what we have just received, and that's what we want to do. So look forward to that change. Announcements will be at the start of Mass. And finally, you might have noticed we have this distinguished gentleman um, serving Mass today. So he can, this is uh, Lu our seminarian, Luis Cabrera, seminarian for the Diocese of Des Moines, who will be joining us all summer soon to be Deacon Luis. Um, we're very excited to have him, and he will tell us just a little bit more about himself. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be immediately after that brief announcement. <laughs> 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 yes, as uh, Father uh, Jacob said, um, I'm going to be spending the uh, summer here all the way until uh, the middle of August. I am a 30-year seminarian at St. Paul Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota, and I will have the great honor of being ordained to the diaconate on the 9th of June at the Church of Corpus Christi, uh, uh, <laughs> the Church of um, Christ the King uh, in, uh, in South Des Moines. So I'm looking forward very much to that uh, great honor and for, to serving as uh, one of your deacons over the summer. And uh, I'm really looking for, I'm nervous about becoming a deacon. Uh, I don't think I still have gotten my head around it, but I am looking forward to becoming uh, one of your deacons uh, over the summer. Thank you very much for welcoming me here. We remember the apostles did not receive a different Holy Spirit on that day of Pentecost. The same Holy Spirit empowers his church today and sends us out on that same mission.
to be witnesses. Let us pray. May these gifts we have consumed benefit us, O Lord, that we may always be aflame with the same Spirit whom you wondrously poured out on your apostles. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads the blessing. May God, the Father of lights, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith, and by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia.